Hello everyone and welcome back to Feature Highlights on Pipsaw TV channel. I am your host Sinisha and today I am going to go through one of the most highly anticipated and requested features to show in our Feature Highlights and that is an Amazon S3 storage integration. You can use this integration to store all of your images uploaded on your website and it's really easy to set it up. So let me show you how to do this. But first, a little disclaimer. Most of the configuration will be performed on Amazon website and naturally we don't have control over this interface. But hopefully it will remain the same for a very long time to keep this video relevant. The first thing to do is to go to Amazon AWS website. I'm feeling lucky. And create an AWS account or sign in if you already have an account. You will need to sign in as the root user. Once you're logged in, sign in to the console or from the My Account dropdown, select AWS Management Console and click on it. In the search for services, features, blogs, etc., search for S3 and click on it. From the left sidebar, select Buckets. And here in the Buckets, you will see that I already have a lot of Buckets prepared, but that is used for our internal testing. We are going to create a new Bucket by clicking on Create Bucket. Give it a name. And this name must be lowercase all of the time. Because if you use uppercases like this, this will probably not work. Amazon has some problems in handling the uppercase letters. So keep everything lowercase. Next, select your AWS region. My target audience for this website is going to be in Europe, so I'm going to select EU Paris. And if you already have an existing buckets, there will be an additional option to copy settings from existing buckets. If you don't have any bucket already created, this option will not be available for you. So let's move on. In the object ownership, select access control lists to be enabled. Object ownership, ownership is going to be bucket owner preferred and we are going to allow all public access. Acknowledge that the current settings might result in this bucket and the object within becoming public. Bucket versioning, tags, and default encryption are all optional settings, so we, we won't touch them in this tutorial. Advanced objects are also optional, so you don't have to set up anything here. Simply create bucket. And now we have successfully created bucket called Pipso TV in EU Paris region. If you're worried that objects can be public in this bucket, well, let me assure you that this is perfectly normal because API needs to access the storage on the S3 and if it's not public, there will be some problems in accessing your buckets. All of the pips of privacy for photos, like when you, when you upload the new photo, like this, you will be able to change the privacy of the photo itself to, let's say, site members. And this, this privacy will absolutely be respected on your PIPSO website. However, in order to write this photo in this bucket, objects must be public, otherwise there will be some issues in trying to access the bucket. We now have 
half of the configuration already set up. We already have a bucket name and we have a region. So let's apply that to Pipsor configuration. Our bucket name is Pipsor TV and the bucket location is Paris. Save the settings. The remaining two options are Amazon Access Key ID and Amazon Secret Access Key. To make those keys, go back to the Management Console and from your name in the drop-down, select Security Credentials. Click on it and in the Identity and Access Management, select Users. add users and create a new IAM user. Give it a reasonable name that you can easily recognize. I'm gonna give it Pipso TV name. This doesn't have to be all lowercase, so you can use whatever. And select programmatic access. In the permissions, attach existing policies directly and find the S3 full access. Select the S3 full access and click on Next, Next, and Create User. At this point, you may want to download the information for this user or reveal your secret access key and screenshot this page because this information will show only now. You will not be able to access it anymore. You can change it later. You can create new credentials at any time, but this will be the one and only time you see them. So I'm going to copy this access key ID and paste it in the appropriate field. And also, I'm going to copy the secret key and paste it here. Save the settings and I have my bucket and AWS integration set up. Now let's see how this works in the front end. Go to your website and Upload the photos. Let's say this one and this one. Wait for them to be processed and then click on post. You might see that it takes a while for post to be created because right now images are being uploaded to the S3 and you can easily see that if you go to your Amazon S3 Management Console, then on Buckets, and open the bucket, you will now see that new folder is created here with this photos stored in the bucket. And if I go and open this photo and say open image in a new tab, I will see that now this image is pulled from Amazon AWS. As a fail-safe measure, all of these uploaded images will also be stored on your local server to prevent situations where you don't want to use S3 storage anymore. And if you disable it and save the settings, now refresh the page and all the images will, will still be available but this time they will be pulled from your local website. Let's enable it back. Save the settings. Refresh the page. And now they will be loaded from the Amazon. This is made in order to prevent situations where you decide not to use AWS anymore so you can easily disable it. 
However, there is also an option to don't keep a local copy of uploaded files. So now, if you enable this option and save the setting, whenever someone posts a new image, let's create a new photo and upload this one. Post it. This image will now not be saved on your local hosting server. The only copy will be available on AWS, as you can see here. So open image in a new tab, and it's loaded from Amazon AWS. If we now go and disable the S3 storage, and try to refresh the page, we will now see that this photo is absolutely wrecked our site. So, be careful how you use this option if you decide to not use S3 storage anymore at some point. Alternatively, you can go to your S3 bucket and download all the files that you have uploaded to it Keep the structure of the folders and simply place them on your web hosting. Obviously, this is my local host because I am hosting the site from my local PC. But you can simply find your storage location by going here in Pearson configuration, then advanced. Scroll down until you find, find the file system override settings and here is your exact location where your files will be stored. So pipso wp content slash pipso and if you take a look here you will see that is the exact location where we are. So pipso wp content pipso and then user one users one photos going back to the bucket you will see that is the exact location so pipso users one photos basically just download your entire bucket and place it to appropriate directory on your website and your images will work again and last but not least you need to understand that if you had images on your web server uploaded previously and you decided to enable S3 storage, those images will not be transferred. So, at the moment when you enable S3 storage, only from that point, new images that are being uploaded to your website will be transferred. All of those images already existing on your web server will not be transferred to S3. And that is all I have for you in this video. If you found it useful or learned something new, give us a thumbs up, smash that bell notification icon to be notified whenever new video comes out, follow us on social media and all that good stuff. Until next video, I wish you all the best with your community. Bye!